Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning to our students online and those here as well. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer and uh, we'll get into our teaching sessions. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for giving us a new week uh, in our lives, oh God. We are grateful for everything that we are learning. Lord, we pray that you will continue to minister to us even as we study these principles that you have placed, Lord, these godly principles. I pray that you will enable us, God, to apply these principles in our lives, uh, in our personal lives, in our work, in everything that we do, God, that we may see uh, fruit, we may see that, uh, Lord, uh, you are granting us your favor. Uh, Lord, we thank you. We just submit these uh, two sessions into your hands, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. All right. So we're in chapter 9, and uh, we stopped in between chapter 9. So let's uh, let's get to the point where it says, develop workplace etiquette and cultural sensitivity. Right? Uh, develop workplace etiquette and cultural sensitivity. All right, hold on. Let me just uh, try to present the notes. OK, so Proverbs 23, 1 to 3. Go ahead. Anyone would like to read? Proverbs 23, 1 to 3. When you sit down to eat with someone important, keep in mind who he is. If you have a big appetite, Restrain yourself. Don't be greedy for the fine food he serves. He may be trying to trick you. Yeah. Now, this this verse is quite stern, right? It says, when you sit down to eat with someone important, keep in mind who is who he is. If you have a big appetite, restrain yourself. So, again, the point uh, that Solomon is trying to bring is to have good workplace etiquette. Now, the word etiquette means simply means manners, right? uh the way we conduct ourselves right uh it is important to make it easy for people to relate to you right uh make it makes it a pleasure to be around you how you present yourself and how you interact with people in the workplace environment determines how effective you will be in your communications within your organization right look at this standing straight Sitting erect, body language, eye contact. Have you spoken to people? And you know, you're speaking to them, but they're, you know, they're looking everywhere. They're looking at the stars. They're looking down. That's that's a very bad habit. It, uh, it's not a good thing. It it only shows that the person is not being respected. So always remember to look at a person when they are talking to you. Right. That's very important. Uh, proper. Uh, attentiveness, proper dress code, punctuality, orderless, personal hygiene. Uh, ah, very important. Keeping your mobile phone on silent mode during a meeting. It is a basic etiquette. Right? Uh, it, it, okay, you don't have to check now. <laughs> No, the reason it's it's it, these are things that are basic, right? Uh, and what happens is, uh, you know, when you have these values in place you know okay these are certain things i will do right and it could also be you know when you're having your food right how do you eat right you may be as hungry as a lion you don't grab the food and just gulp it in your mouth you you eat it knowing that okay i'm, I'm at a workplace at home it's a different story right you you can be yourself but always remember that Etiquette, especially when you're outside in the workplace, uh, is, is very important. Learn to apologize to for the mistakes that you make, right? Uh, uh, pay attention to cultural backgrounds because what may be accepted in one culture may not be accepted in another culture. And this happened to me once, you know, uh, in the workplace. I'm a pure non-vegetarian. Okay, so. So we at the workplace, and then there were a lot of guys who were vegetarians, right? And uh, I would say, hey, what is this? It's okay. I will eat whatever I want to eat, uh, you know. Uh, but then I realized after some time that people didn't want to sit with me. And people were like, you know, hey, you know. And I realized it's my mistake because I acted too smart by saying that, okay. So just being sensitive, right? Uh, and, so, and like, you know, we also have believers who are, 
you know, who have come from a Hindu background. And they are, you know, like yesterday we had our uh, uh, church services and we had lunch together. And we have, uh, uh, you know, two, three families who are from Hindu background, but they all ate vegetarian, right? Uh, because for them, it's they've been doing it for years. It's not something that I should go and say, hey, now you're a believer, you can eat what you want. I don't have to. That's their food preference. It's basic cultural sensitivity. We're being sensitive to people. And um, when you're meeting with senior leaders, walk in wisdom. It is uh, best to take your rightful place. Don't try to promote yourself, right? Uh, remember that promotion comes from the Lord. Yes? Right? You work hard. You be honorable in your work. Be faithful in your work. Promotion will come for the Lord. You don't have to please your boss, right? No matter what. No matter which organization, whether ministry, whether workplace, you don't have to please anybody. You do your work, do it effectively, be faithful, promotion comes from the Lord, right? When the heat is on, behave wisely. First Samuel 18, 13 through 15 and verse 30. Let's read that. Therefore, Saul removed him from his presence and made him his captain over a thousand and he went out and came in be before the people and david david behaved wisely in all his ways and the lord was with him therefore when saul saw that he behaved very wisely he was afraid of him then the prince of the philistine went out to war and so it was whenever they went out that david behaved more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name become highly esteemed. This is a classic uh, story of jealousy and how jealousy can lead to murder. But we always look at how what things Saul did. But if you look at the other picture, look at David. You know, King Saul is targeting David, but David is saying he's acting wise. Saying, "See, he's the king." One, he wants me right in front in the battlefield. I'll go. I'll not argue that. He behaved wisely. And then later on, he made him his son-in-law. And yet he was targeting him. Yet David was wise. He didn't say, you know what, now I've got you know, 400, 500 people with me. I can. Do you think David could have killed Saul, uh, Saul King Saul? How long would it have taken for him? One evening's work. <laughs> One stone with a sling. Yeah. If he did it to Goliath, it'll take no time, right? He could have finished him off, but he acted wisely. Uh, in the workplace, there can be people who sometimes who are bosses and uh, leaders who you know try to have their own personal agendas. There's politics and all of it. When the heat is on, behave wisely. And I would say the best way to behave wisely is to keep quiet, right? There are times we'll have to present our case, but most of the time when the heat is on, just stay quiet. Let the Lord fight your battles, right? Let the Lord speak on your behalf. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a boss could be unfair. He may overlook your good works. Uh, learn to be bigger than these things. And, uh, yes, we may feel bad. Hey, I've been working here for so long. Nobody has um, you know, uh, appreciated me. That's all right. Sometimes we tend to overreact. Fight for your rights, but do it at the right time. Right? Not when the heat is on. Right? So, so just be wise on how you uh, behave. And David did that. He behaved wisely. Right? Uh, but imagine, you know, I always, when I read scriptures, I always imagine what would have happened if we, if we had taken the other step. What would have happened? What if David killed Solomon? Sorry, David killed King Saul. What would have happened? Would God have said, you know, I didn't ask you to do this. Now, you know, because of this, I will not make you the king of Israel. Could have happened. God told Moses, don't hit the stone. To speak to it. He hit it. God told Moses, from the rivers of Kadesh, you will see the people walk into the promised land. You will not go in. 
but god you i did everything from the burning bush till now i've been obedient now you're letting me see the promise and you're not letting me go in see that's why uh, i love first samuel no? i think it's first samuel 15 where he says for god obedience is better than sacrifice and so david was obedient he acted in wisdom right stay clear of meaningless arguments proverbs 3:30 and 31 Proverbs 3, 30 and 31. Don't argue with others for no reason when they have never done you any harm. Don't be zealous of violent people or decide to act as they do. There are arguments sometimes, you know, uh, in the workplace, you will have discussions, right? Uh, but whatever organization, even if you're five people in an organization, you have to have discussions, right? Now, sometimes these discussions can get into arguments gets into an argument stay away from it stay just keep quiet right uh, because sometimes these well-intended discussions when they become arguments it becomes a meaningless argument people are talking out of personal agenda they have a personal vendetta meaning they have something against you right so they'll say you know they'll start you know uh, arguments They'll pick up something you did two years back and bring it up now. That's there, right? Did it happen to Daniel? There was nothing wrong with him, but they tried to find something in this fellow, Daniel, right? And did Daniel go and fight his case? Hey, why you want to put me in the lion's den? I heard it. Now, the interesting part is in Daniel 6, Daniel is the governor. So for them to write, and say, okay, uh, those who don't worship uh, this God will be thrown into the lion's den. Daniel would have given his signature. His seal would have been there. Do you think he wouldn't have known? He didn't say, no, I'm not signing this. He said, I'll sign. <laughs> you want me to sign? I'll sign. It. it didn't affect him. He stayed clear of meaningless arguments. Why? Because he knows that God is there. Right? If I argue with this, these three people, they want me dead. If I argue with them, there is no point. They're only going to make up a story and go tell the king something else. Right? So, okay. I'll give you a seal. Now, Daniel knew he's not going to do it yet. He put he may have put the seal. Right? So stay clear of uh, meaningless arguments. Uh, defer the discussions to another day or choose another approach, right? Now, even in, in, in our office, right, in, uh, in an organization that we, especially in ministry, see, we all have different strategies and different plans, right? The media team will want to do it one way. The graphics team may want to say, hey, we'll do it this way. Or as, a, as the pastoral team or in charge of the ministry, I would want it that way. Right? So we got like three, four ideas. But the best part is when we come together and we collaborate and we put all those ideas together, right? number one is we see that there should not be any personal agenda. I don't have anything against him. He doesn't have anything against me. Right? Now, were there disagreements? Yeah, there were. Right? Uh, you know, many times I said, hey, can we do it this way? Then I was wrong. And so they said, no, uh, you know, Paul, we should have done it this way said okay yeah i think we will do it the next time we'll do it this way many times you know we've tried but in all of it we try to avoid getting into meaningless arguments now of course this is a church so it's easy to uh, you know work like this but even in an organization you ask god for favor daniel didn't work in the church he was not looking after the temple of uh, jerusalem he was working in babylon one of the worst places to work in at that time, right? Uh, and so, especially when you're in a discussion and you feel that everything is getting heated up, choose another day for the discussion, right? So, so for example, in Bible college, you have two of them fighting and you are standing there. Okay, don't fight, okay? I'm just saying, example, uh, to them, there's a misunderstanding. You're standing there, but that this thing has become, argument has become too much. I don't keep continuing and talking there. Defer it to another day. Hey, we'll meet tomorrow, 3 p.m. Right? So things are, uh, you know, you're not getting into meaningless arguments. 
when a co-worker underperforms or violates rules handle it cautiously proverbs 30 10. don't blow the whistle on your fellow worker behind their backs they all accuse you of being underhanded and then you all be the guilty one in an organization remember you're all working together you'll have people who are underperforming people who are just average people who are performing very well right now in all of this there will also be people who will violate rules every organization will have rules right now what happens when you find out that a person violates rules don't always take the matter in your own hands right uh there could be a team a hr team you go and report the matter there hey I'm, i i feel that this is what uh this person is doing wrong i'm just letting you know please leave my name anonymous meaning don't let them know that i'm the one who's but this is going against the rules of the um, organization so okay, i'm just sharing it with you you handle it whether there's a legal team or a hr team just do it that way so that way you are being cautious right next one feedback pay attention and pay close attention to it proverbs 27 21 proverbs 27 21 the refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold and a man is valued by what others say say of him he is smarter than seven men who can give good reasons for their opinions nice no a lazy person will think he's smarter than all the seven fellows there'll be seven smart fellows the lazy person say hey i'm better than all seven of them it's only words there's no backup with action why it's very important as as people right whether we are uh, uh, you know whatever sphere of influence to take feedback the moment we feel we know everything that's the end of the story right you cannot do anything right? i keep telling my little ones you know he's very good in music so i say hey, keep practicing no i know everything so how you know i don't know everything how you know everything <laughs> no i know i know all the songs I say, so i i keep telling him no the the moment you keep saying i know everything i'm not going to say anything to you i'll say okay good you know everything so you got to change the way you think you know you got to change change the way you look at it okay you want to be a drummer you, you look at the other drummers see how good they are okay you have to practice to get there. You can't just say, because no, I know everything. So these are children, right? They're, but even in adults, there are people who will say, I know everything. But it's very important to pay attention to feedback. As an, in an organization, um, when you have team leaders, managers, they give you feedback. Take that feedback. See where you can improve, right? So one of the things that... Uh, uh, I do is when people share feedback with me, I don't take it lightly, right? Uh, remember I told you, like, you know, one uncle came up to me and he said, uh, Paul, your preaching was very good, all of that. But why are you bent? Why are you bending? I said, no, I, it's just a habit because every time he said, no, you sound straight. Nothing about preaching, right? But it was just a, a feedback. And he's a grown-up, uh, you know, a person been with the church for many years. I could have said, forget about the standing. How was the message? A powerful message, no? Did you listen to the whole message? That means you are looking at me. You're not hearing the message. <laughs> this is wrong, right? Don't take feedback lightly. Uh, and you know, so even when you are in an organization, when leaders give you feedback hey why don't you come on time first you come on time <laughs> don't say that right uh, no uh, it, it it sounds funny but uh, what happens is we are not taking in feedback and when we don't take in feedback we try to defend our shortcomings so you know because i am like this i'm like this so i will do it like this what will happen you're putting a blockage on our growth 
right? And saying, no, I don't want to grow. I will do it my way. And that's very wrong, right? So recognize areas of improvement, growth, skills, development, and work on these areas. There's something called as, uh, I was just reminded of this, you know, when I was working in the IT uh, company, there's something called as a SWOT analysis, right? SWOT is strengths, I hope I get it right. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Right? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So we do a SWOT analysis, and we used to do it uh, uh, during those days, we used to do it like uh, every half yearly or yeah, it was half yearly and then um, so June and December, uh, we would do a SWOT analysis. So we look as a team, what is our strengths? What's our weaknesses? What are opportunities? And what are some of the threats to the organization? We do an analysis and we work with that for the entire year, right? So it e enables us to uh, be effective in our work. Always receive correction with a good attitude. Proverbs 12.1. Proverbs 12.1. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Solomon is uh, he's not worried about what people think. right? Why? Because he's gone through life. So he's saying very clearly, you, whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. You hate it, you're stupid. Right. Uh, so basically what he's saying is you receive correction with a good attitude and with a willingness to change, work on improvements. Um, and there will be times as a leader, uh, you will be corrected. Now, as students, it's easy to take correction, right? Okay, okay, Pastor, I will do it. Yeah, okay, sir, I will do it. Okay, ma'am, I'll do it. But when you come to a certain level, 10 years in ministry or 10 years in an organization and someone tries to correct you uh, what's your name <laughs> you know how many years i was here in this organization you know how many years yeah when you were planning to join ministry i was already finished 10 years <laughs> so you know it's that's where humility comes into place right so no matter uh how long you're doing something always remember that there is a place for correction there's a place for uh, improvement um, and when when you come to a certain place when you are willing to take correction and you bring correction to people people will take it people will receive it if i keep saying no i'll do it my way when i want to correct people as a leader they're not going to listen to me they'll say it's okay they may listen out of respect but they may not apply it. And the point of giving a feedback is for them to apply it, right? So uh, where the people who you correct are the ones who you care for, and you want to see them grow and develop and become a better person. So build rapport with them so that they can continue to provide input, right? So even as you are ministering to, or not only ministering, but uh, even as you're working in the organization, build rapport with people, right? <laughs> I shared last week, right? How I would uh, sit with these guys and listen to their calls, right? And build rapport and understand and learn and grow and get better in what I was doing. Um, be careful as you stand as a guarantor. Uh, let's read uh, Proverbs 11 5, 15, sorry. And Proverbs 22 26. Proverbs 11 15. He who is Sorty of stranger will suffer, but one who hates being sorty is secure. Proverbs 22, verse 26 and 27. Do not be one of those who shakes hands in a pledge. One of those who is surety of depth. If you have nothing with which to pay, why should he take away your bed from under you? words of King Solomon here basically what he's trying to say is see in an organization people will come now for example I mean it may not happen always right now you've built a rapport with somebody you become friends with them and now they may say hey I'm taking a home loan can you become a guarantor I'm taking a car loan can you become a guarantor first thing you say is no okay <laughs> right uh, because you see the, the reason I'm saying say no is because 
it says here, be careful, right? So I've heard of stories where people have gone as a guarantor. The person has bought a house, not even in the same city, in their hometown. And this guy is happily gone and he's living there. And this person here is paying the loan. And we're trying to connect with him. Where is he? He's in another city. He left the job. He's the, this other person signed as a guarantor, right? And, and so even as you stand, if, if you have to stand as a guarantor, be careful, be wise. Right? Don't just sign on the dotted line without thinking. Right? Uh, don't get into, uh, you know, it's like you digging a hole and you yourself jumping into it. Doesn't make sense. Right? So just be careful in all of this. Avoid astrologers, horoscopes, fortune tellers, and palm readers. Jeremiah 10.2. Jeremiah 10 2. Thus says the Lord, do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the Gentiles are dismayed at them. So, here again in, in Jeremiah, uh, uh, do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the signs of the heaven. Meanings like, you know, stargazing. If three stars are together today, I'm going to get good food at home. Right? or palm reading, right? and all of these things, avoid it. Fortune tellers, the bird will come and take one card and tell you what you are. That bird doesn't know when that bird is going to die. So, so there's no point in going. And as believers, we must stay away from it. Don't even think about it. Don't even let not the thought itself come, because the Bible says that the Lord is the one who sustains us. Psalms 139, he's written all the days of our life, even before one day came to us. So this astrology, horoscopes, palm reading, stay away from it. Right? Uh, especially when an organization, don't go to people. and People may come and say, hey, why don't we go to the astrologer or fortune teller and see when will, when will, our, when will we become managers or when will we become uh, uh, CEOs? You tell them, you please go. You don't go with them. Right? Uh, so you just stay away from all of this. They may ask you why. Right? You tell them, hey, the reason I'm not coming is because I believe in Jesus. And then it gives you an opportunity to share the gospel, right? And even as you, you know, people may call you, uh, don't, you know, don't be rude with them and say, you know, you go, you know, you know don't do it that way. But be very humble, be very polite. No, I wouldn't want to come because this is not something that I believe in. Right? So we finished with chapter 9. Let's get into chapter 10. Any questions? Those online, any questions? Okay. Okay, let's get into chapter 10. Oh, this is a very, very interesting chapter. Chapter 10 is planning and execution. How many of us like to plan? Like plan, right? How many of us plan our uh, week or our month or maybe really? Wow, very good. Uh, so planning is very important. That is good. But execution is the key. <laughs> I can have 10 plans and execute none of them. <laughs> it's just on paper. Right? So, so we must maintain a good balance. Right? So, okay, if I plan something, eventually I want to get to execute it. Right? So, in this chapter, we look at um, how we can plan scriptural insights on planning and uh, strategy execution. Right? And whether, again, whether we are in ministry or in an organization working, you will need to plan, you will need to execute. Right? Uh, and so let's look at a few insights from here. First one, determine the counsel of the Lord. Proverbs 19.21. We humans keep brainstorming options and plans, but God's purpose prevails. And I like this message translation. We keep brainstorming options. Uh, you know what brainstorming means? Like We all come together and we say, hey, how can we make, you know, Biryani today. So we have all of us put in our thoughts. 
and then that's called brainstorming right you know brainstorm but as you plan get god involved involve god in your planning right you have the natural but you also ask god for the supernatural right i heard the saying you you do the natural god will do the supernatural right so you do the natural of thinking okay i'm going to work here for the next one year or next two years this is how i'm going to plan my day i'm going to plan my weeks this is what i'm going to do in a day you're planning it out but then you also get god involved say god these are things that i want to do uh, i want to spend time in reading this book or i want to spend time uh, serving in the church in this way so you're getting god involved in the planning now it doesn't mean see even in the smallest of the plannings you can get god involved right so for example christmas is coming and you, know, you have to decorate the house it's you've done it for many years so you know take a paper write down this is what i'll do on 20th 21st 22nd and you write it down now, it's not like you have to fast and pray and ask god what when should i put up the christmas tree right so even as you plan right you you just open your heart to to god and ask him to give you insights and ideas right to get right people involved in the planning uh, proverbs 20 and 18 proverbs 20 verse 18 come purpose by asking for counsel then carry it out using all the help you can get to be involved in the planning process right now if you look at an organization you have the ceo right or the the leader and the pioneer and then you may have managers and then you have assistant managers team leaders and then uh, uh, maybe quality analysts and then you go down to the entry level now when you're in an organization if you are leading an organization or you're leading a team get the right people involved to give ideas to give strategies share the plan with them uh, right uh, help them to get a clear idea of what the plan is and how we're going to pursue the plan one of the things that most organizations have is something called as a core team right where we have like you know a leader and then you have maybe three people did jesus have a core team who oh well disciples and yeah go ahead john peter why are you so confused peter james and john <laughs> right peter james on i mean i'm not saying that he didn't like the others but in the 12 you know when jairus's uh, daughter was dead what did he do he took only peter james and john inside and they were at the uh, uh mount of transfiguration only peter james and john were there right he was there was something right so we don't know what you know jesus did like he probably shared ideas with them and said okay where to go for next mission trip shall we go here or probably he did all of that so when you have a a, a core team um just share your plans share your ideas get their inputs right or uh, in something that we have in apc is we have the pastoral team meeting every month or uh, uh, first saturday we meet together we discuss okay, this is what the, we share our thoughts share ideas uh, come up with new plans new strategies uh, if there's nothing then we just continue just meet um, you know pray for each other right so but then we keep each other informed of what is happening in our ministries right uh because see we we're all at different locations we are handling different ministries so when we come together we just uh put it all together and uh, you know team deliverables what are we delivering as a team right and look ahead preempt the unexpected proverbs 22 and 3 a prudent man Oses evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. This is one of the uh, characteristics of planning. When we plan, of a leader, of a leader as well, right? Uh, look ahead. 
you must be able to envision what your church or what your organization will look like five years or ten years down the line. And what you need for that. Plan ahead. You know, yesterday we celebrated how many years? APC. 23 years on Feb 18. What was the vision of the church on February 18, 2001? To be salt and light to the city of Bangalore, voice to the nation and the nations. How many people were there in the church? 12 people. Has that vision changed? It's not changed. It's going to be the same. With 12 people, the vision was the same. With 1,000, 10,000 people, the vision will be the same. It is foreseeing, foresight of what we're going to do. I remember, I think it was 2000 and 2009, 9 or 10, when you know, once a uh, pastor was sharing and he said, one day our Bible college course will go global. I was sitting in the Bible college, I was sitting in church that Sunday, I remember very clearly. We were ministering to people from different countries. I said, how? How? We'll go there and plant a church, or we'll go there and start a... But look at it now. Right? Oh, foresight. Right? And look at our publications. We've got a few uh, foreign languages also, right? Russian, French, and German, and all of those. And it's going to different countries. Foresight. Right? And as a leader, we must, in the planning process, we must be able to see ahead. Okay, now it's 24. In 2028, four, oh, four years down the line, what, what must I see? What do I want to see in my organization? What do I want to see in the ministry? Or what do I want to see in my life? Preempt. Right. So, you, so for example, for your personal life, you're writing and saying, I want to be a pastor. Or I want to start my own business or a school. My own educational school, right? A school. What do I have to do? I have to see it, envision it, look ahead, and work on it now. Right? For some seasons are more intense than others. Proverbs 10:5 says, He who gathers in summer is a, is a wise son. He who sleeps in the harvest is a son who causes shame. Now, once the planning, once the preparation is done, then comes time for action. That means then comes time for execution. Best example, Joseph. Tell me what the dream is the king says. What does he do? He tells the dream. So this is the dream. You will have seven years of abundance, seven years of famine. OK, can I go back to my prison? I was just in the middle of something. Did he do that? <laughs> he gave a solution. He put it into action. He said, okay, here's what we can do. Now, seven years, save up. Next seven years, you will have enough. Not only for Egypt, you can also help others. Because seven years of abundance. So maybe, you know, God thought seven times more than normal, I'll give you. Next seven years, you'll have nothing with you. Wise. Right? He came up with the idea. And so there was hard work. He had to work hard in that season. Imagine Joseph said, you know, let's take a break. One year break we'll take. I'm sure they didn't. Because seven years they knew every grain that is being saved is worth it, is precious. Right? What would you and I do? If you know next seven years there's no Wi-Fi. <laughs> Just joking. But what if next seven years is a famine? What would you and I do? We'll start fasting, <laughs> right? Uh, so you you you're you're looking ahead. Some seasons are more intense, right? So for example, now when you look at Christmas time, for us as believers, you know it's more intense, right? A lot of church events, a lot of things that we're doing within the church, compared to the other months. Usually December is a month that is more intense. So you take it up. Right? Take it as an action. Don't say December 1st, oh, no, Christmas is coming. <laughs> Christmas carols and all. No. Right? You, you take it up as a challenge, right? Put your 
hands to the task and work. Next. Uh, execution can be messy and disruptive. Read Proverbs 14.14. 14, 14. 14, 4, sorry. Where no oxen are, the row is clean. But much increase comes by the strength of an ox. Yeah. So when you have oxen and are working in the fields, the trough can get messy. So during execution, other things tend to take on low priority because you have now set your sights on specific goals. Right now, in an organization, right, you you may have times when you know you execute your plans that you have made, and more focus is given on a certain decision or a certain plan. Right. So, for example, you say, okay, when it's usually when it's March, April, you see most organizations they are these uh, the accountants are working day and night. Why? Because it's the audit season. Right, you you look at an accountant during March, April. They'll not re respond to your uh, meaning. They'll be so busy, There's so much of work to get done. Right, it's audit. You have to audit the organizations, uh, and so everything happens. Now during execution, things may get disruptive. Right, it may not go as we plan, but you stay the course. Say, okay, if this is something that's not working, let's try something else. Right, so you should be able to also be flexible in when it comes to planning and execution. Next, stay focused and avoid distractions. And, uh, Proverbs twelve eleven says, "The one who stays on the job has food on the table; the witless chase whims and fancies." Right, focus is an integral part of uh, you know the execution, focusing on your goals, right. Why is it that people make New Year resolutions and by the time it's January 30th, they've forgotten it? Why? February 1st, they're wondering, what was my New Year resolution? <laughs> Why? There's no focus. You take a binoculars and you have to probably bird watch, right? What do you do? You, you focus on that bird, right? You need to focus there, okay? You can't look at uh, you know uh, the sky and say where's that bird gone? No, you got to focus. It's there. Focus your lens to that. Focus means avoiding distractions, right? And here, stay focused. Will distractions come? Distractions will come in a hundred ways or more. Hundred or more ways distractions can come. What is one way? Phone. <laughs> Yes? What are the other distractions? Friends. What is another distraction? Sorry? No, phone is number one on the list. <laughs> it's already shared. Okay, phone, friends, laziness, right? Uh, failure can be a big distraction. Right? When we fail in something, you say, oh man, I don't want to do this. I failed the last time I did it, right? So you stay focused, uh, uh, focused on the idea, focused on what you know you're doing. Ask God for the grace, and stay focused, right? Uh, and eventually, when you stay focused, uh, you will reach that goal. You will reach that goal. If some of you here want to be pastors and you want to start your own ministries, the devil will come to distract you with hundred things. You got to stay focused. You got to say no. I know there is lots of things happening around me, but I want to focus myself on what I want, what God wants me to do, right? Uh, and so, no matter what, right? Ministry, organization, stay focused in your work. You cannot get work done if your mind is wandering from place to place. Right? Even if you're, for example, you're listening to a session, right? Uh, and and you know your focus is going all over the place. That's why the Bible says, I take every thought captive. I right? say, no, I want to learn, I want to sit, I want to listen to this, right? 
and and you're what you're doing is you're bringing your focus back to what is priority right don't just talk act but act on what is really important proverbs 14:23 all labor there is profit but idle chatter leads only to poverty you know talking is very easy how many of you have friends who only talk when you were in school you would have had those friends they will keep talking and half of what they say is not true right? <laughs> only talking right uh, you don't didn't have friends like that we had friends like that you know they say you know one day i went to you know this country and i came uh, i went to you know and then you talk to them you say you'll know that all their life they are sitting there only <laughs> right uh, see in your work in your ministry don't just talk let people see it right when you talk act on it if you say that hey one day i'm going to do this it's good but again even when you talk you talk about it to who it's really important don't go and knock on your neighbors do and say you know what god is calling me for ministry you say what should i do <laughs> go and start your ministry right so you be wise on who you share what you share but don't just talk put it act on it right uh, a, a wiser thing is you know like we talked about it right wisdom speaks only when it's necessary right so if if you if you have to say some things say it and make sure you act on it if you feel you're not able to act on it don't say it i will wake up every day at 4 am and i will read proverbs one chapter every day it's already 6 am <laughs> nothing has happened so don't just talk but you got to act on it right next engage your team together everyone achieves more ecclesiastes 4 9 to 12 let's read that just 4 9 to 12 who are better off than one because together they can work more effectively if one of them falls down the other can help him up but if someone is alone and falls it's just too bad because there is no one to help him if it is cold two can sleep together and stay warm but how can you keep warm by yourself two people can resist an attack that would defeat one person alone a rope made of three cords is hard to break yeah. so when it comes to execution we see that it says requires passionate commitment and work from all the people that are involved right so many of them may be involved when it comes to uh getting a task fulfilled engage your team engage them right uh, give them opportunities and the work done in a collaborative manner when you see success it's so beautiful right and uh, progress is monitored and shared with everyone uh, probably there are pending tasks there are challenges there are delays everything can be worked on together right uh, so engage your team never feel in an organization that you are a one man show especially if it's a ministry never feel that it can never be a one man show right engage teams build teams engage teams right and then eventually you know that you're working towards the you know the vision of the organization right uh information flows freely in an organization so there's vertically it flows horizontally it flows that means you're able to relate to your leaders you're also able to relate to your uh, colleagues okay let's do the last point before we take a break sorry Oh no, there's three more points. Okay, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll continue.